What is up, guys? It is the Blue Bloods here, and you know what Friday mornings are, man. It's our SWAC previews, and, the, and it's finally here. We finally got here. The SWAC championship is going to be on the line this weekend in Jackson, Mississippi. The vet is going to be packed. I would imagine we are going to probably see a near record crowd this weekend in Jackson, Mississippi, as we have a huge matchup. Not only going to determine the SWAC champion, but who is going to go represent the SWAC in the Celebration Bowl later this month against you know, against the MEAC champion, South Carolina State, man. So we got Jackson State hosting Prairie View A&M. The Tigers are a seven-point favorite as I'm recording. This game kicks off 3 p.m. Central Time on ESPN2. And listen, I know it's heads up with some big games. You got the AAC Championship, Cincinnati-Houston. and You also have the SEC Championship, Alabama versus Georgia. But make sure to have this game somewhere on the screen. You can watch all three. I know I will be, but make sure you have this game pulled up on this on, on some screen so we can drive the numbers up for the TV, you know, market share and things like that for the swag, man. So make sure to do that. And listen, man, we also talk about just implications for these teams. Let's set the table and then we'll get into the keys of the game. The Tigers, 10 and 1, undefeated season in the swag. And Deion Sanders, man, head coach, head coach, prom, whatever you want to call him is going to be looking for a SWAC championship in only his second season as the head coach, really like 1.5 if you want to count the spring as like half a season. And he has an opportunity, guys, to bring Jackson State their first SWAC championship, their first SWAC championship win since 2007, guys. And this is this was this is their first appearance in the title game since 2013 for the Tigers. So it's been a long time coming for Jackson State. And Coach Prom has an opportunity to do something that hasn't been done in a very long time in Jackson. I mean, like, listen, guys, I mean, 2007 is a long time ago. I mean, I wasn't even in middle school yet in 07. That just like put that in a little bit of perspective for you guys. So it's been a long time. But then on the other side, you have Prairie View coming in seven and four, six and two in the swag. Three game losing streak, but Eric Dooley is looking to some like you know spark something for, for this team. And they've had injuries, the coaching rumors, a tough schedule down the stretch. But all this, man, if they win this weekend, all that becomes irrelevant. They get their first SWAC championship win since 2009, and the Panthers could completely shake up the postseason with a big upset win this weekend. So that three game losing streak, all this, all the you know. I guess arrows they've taken over these past few weeks from SWAT fans all over the country, from the media, all that could be for naught if they pull off the upset this weekend. I mean, this would be a this would be like a season defining win for Prairie View and Dooley. Now, Jackson State's won the past two matchups against Prairie View, and the last time these teams matched up, it was 2019 in Texas, a two overtime thriller that Jackson State pulled out. Listen, we can only hope that this season's matchup in the SWAC title game can live up to that type of excitement, excitement and hype. But that's the stage, man. Nothing. I mean, it's conference championship week. You should be as excited as I am. This is one of the best weekends in college football. Now, we'll start with the keys for Jackson State. And I told you guys in that all corn preview two weeks ago that I wasn't going to change my keys. It's been the same pretty much the whole season for Jackson State. And is there any other key on the offensive side of the ball that makes sense other than to let Shador Sanders win you this game? Listen, he is one of the best distributors, decision makers in the in, in, in the FCS right now, man. Listen, he is so calm in the pocket. He's so comfortable in the pocket. And he is the unquestioned, you know, no doubt leader of this offense for Jackson State this season. And if you're T.C. Taylor, there's there should be nobody that you feel is more qualified and you that, that you feel more comfortable in allowing them to go win you the game. I mean, he's been one of the best freshmen in the FCS all season long. But listen, this is still going to be a tough test. Listen, you can say Prairie View hasn't played well, this and that. But listen, Prairie View still has the number three passing defense in the SWAC, less than 185 yards per game allowed this season for Prairie View. Now, you look at this passing offense for Jackson State, 100, I mean, over 270 yards per game as number two in the SWAC. And when you look at Shador, man, he won freshman of the year. There was a big argument whether he should have won offensive player of the year, both. And listen, just, just in case you guys don't know, 
you cannot win more than one of the major awards. So you can't win newcomer and freshman. You can't win offensive and freshman. You can't win offensive and newcomer. You can't win defensive and newcomer. They're going to pick separate winners for all those top rewards just to give more people in the conference shine. So it wasn't like some conspiracy theory that they snubbed them. They just literally couldn't give Shador Sanders more than that one award. But you know, Shador this season, over 2,900 passing yards, has a chance to go over 3,000 yards this weekend. I mean, it, he's going to his 30 yards. If he throws for less than 30 yards, Jackson State's losing this game. But 2,900 yards, 28 passing touchdowns, five interceptions, three rushing touchdowns. As a true freshman, guys, he leads the SWAC in efficiency, completion percentage, and is second in passing yards and passing touchdowns to none other than Akil Glass from Alabama a and But he has been – he has been really a saving force for this offense. When you look at the running game struggles, the offensive line struggles, Shador Sanders has played at another level. And I really think that at the end of the season, as we kind of look back on the season, more and more people should be giving him a bulk of the credit for where this team is overall. You look at James Houston, and the defense, they get a lot of credit, but on the offensive side, it's been Shador Sanders carrying this offense all the way to the finish line. Now, you have Keith Corbin at wide receiver, 63 catches over 880 yards and six touchdowns. He's really come on late in the season and been one of the top wide receivers in the SWAC over these past few weeks. And then also Malachi Wadman should be returning from his suspension. SWAC Sports Central group and all the Facebook groups that drug me. I'm waiting on my apology for me being right while y'all didn't know what y'all were talking about. But we'll leave it at that. Malachi Wadman, though. 30 catches for over 480 yards, 11 touchdowns. Listen, this kid's a touchdown machine, a matchup nightmare, one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. And if Prairie View doesn't have doesn't find a way to control him and limit his explosive plays, Malachi Wildman quickly can become a problem, just like he has been late this season. And he's second in the swack and receiving touchdown, guys. And I want to put this in perspective. He didn't even see a snap until at the Alabama AM game. And he's one touchdown away from leading the SWAC in receiving touchdowns. I just want to put that perspective in. Malachi Wadman has played at a furious pace down the stretch, and you really wonder what his stats could have been if he would have played, you know, at the beginning of this season. And I think this weekend with him, I know he was suspended last week, didn't play. And with him being well-rested, he could really be a matchup nightmare for Prairie View this weekend. Now, Trevante, Rucker, Josh Lanier, the other two guys you have to watch out for in this wide receiving core. Now, the rushing offense. Listen, Prairie View's defense for me is too good for Jackson State to be completely one-dimensional. They're going to have to rush for at least 75 yards this weekend. I'm setting the bar as low as I possibly can. Give me 75 yards, Jackson State, please. They have the last ranked rushing attack in the SWAC. It ranks dead last at 90 yards per game this season. Santi Marshall, Peyton Pickett, J.D. Martin are the really the three guys that get the main touches. Peyton Pickett's come on these past few weeks and really been the main guy. But for me, I think J.D. Martin has to get more touches. I called for it against Alcorn. It really didn't happen. So for me, they have to find a way to get the running game at least somewhat viable so so they i mean because really and truly what's going to happen is prairie view is going to drop as many in coverage as possible and they're going to make shador beat them and they're going to make it very hard to throw the football they are probably going to dare jackson state to run and if i'm prairie view i would until you show me you can be balanced and not be one dimensional i'm not going to respect the run at all i am going to take every passing lane away from shador i can and then the number one thing is also not allowing shador to get out of the pocket and scramble but that's probably going to be prairie views defensive scheme early so jackson state's going to have to find a way to get that run game together now for prairie view th their game plan lies in the rushing attack it's been the difference all season long when the rushing attack is clicking that's when the passing attack for pass, especially the deep field passing attack, really opens up. And the number one key for Prairie View, they have to control the pace of the game, keep that Jackson State offense on the sideline, and also on top of that, they have to find a way to impose their will on Jackson State's front seven, which is way easier said than done. I understand that, but they're going to have to. Jackson State ranks second in the SWAC in rushing defense and has, has allowed the fewest rushing touchdowns in the, in the SWAC this year with only seven rushing touchdowns allowed by the Tigers. When you look at this Panthers rushing attack, it's second in the SWAC in yards per game with 166 yards per game on the ground. 
Injuries to some key contributors late in the season have really limited the impact of this rushing game, and the Panthers have not reached 150 yards in the past two games and were held under 130 yards rushing for the first time this season last week. Now, Jaden Stewart's probably going to be the main guy this weekend, 654 rushing yards, five yards per carry, and seven rushing touchdowns. Jaden Stewart's going to have to have a giant game on the ground. You are going to have to try to replicate what Texas Southern did in the first half where you generate some explosive plays up the middle, make some guys miss, and put pressure on this Jackson State defense to stop those explosive plays. And then the Demian Brooks has been banged up. He's missed the past two games with an injury, but there are reports that he should hopefully be able to return this weekend. So fingers crossed for Prairie View. Brooks coming back would be huge for this rushing attack, over 450 on the ground for him, almost six yards per carry and five rushing touchdowns. He is a very important piece on to, on to what makes this rushing attack so explosive. Now, Jawan passes legs, another key over 200 yards rushing for him. But if Brooks can't go, look for Ahmad Antone to step up at that running back spot. He has almost 200 yards rushing and a rushing touchdown. He was really the second guy on the rotation against Valley last week. So look for Antone to have, you know, a bigger role if Brooks is still hurt and cannot go this weekend in the SWAC championship. But I would imagine he's at least going to try to walk out there and try to do something against Jackson State because this is the SWAC championship. It's your last chance to potentially play your way into a postseason game. Now, once the rushing attack is established, that's going to be important. The Panthers have to be electric through the air. Listen, when you run the football, run the football. PV's done an excellent job of using those loaded boxes and hitting defenses over the top. Jawan Pass has to try to put pressure on the secondary. Jackson State's defense ranks number one in the SWAC with only 158 yards allowed through the air per game. They're the only SWAC team in this season to allow less than 10 touchdowns through the air. So Jackson State's secondary has stood up thus far, but there's been some opportunities, but that front seven is just too good. If Jawan Pass can create some opportunities downfield, this game could get very interesting for, for, uh, for Prairie View. Pass this weekend, man, over 20, or go, going into this weekend, 2,500 passing yards, 16 passing touchdowns, only nine interceptions, second in the SWAC behind Shador in completion percentage, third in yards, fifth in touchdowns, and top five in efficiency as well. Jawan Pass has been one of the best quarterbacks all year long. The number one thing for Pass, though, and this is going to be a key, and I know a lot of people, y'all, uh, you know, a lot of people who were tuned into Scotty's live stream commented this. The number one thing for Pass this weekend is to avoid turnovers. That was a struggle early in the season. He had six interceptions in his first three games, but only two interceptions over the past four games, four passes this season. If he can, if he can avoid turnovers, if Pass has no turnovers. Prairie View is going to go as really going to increase the chances Prairie View has to pull off this upset. Now, everyone knows Antonio Mullins is their leading wide receiver. He is out with an injury. He broke his fibula last week against Valley. So now they're going to have to find someone to step up. That's a 500 plus yard receiver, two touchdowns. Look for these guys right here, man. Jalen Howard, Trajan Spiller, and Colby Washington. Those are going to be the guys that I'm going to look for to step up in place of Mullins. All have under 20 catches, but they've combined all for over 240 yards. Howard has 445 this year, four touchdowns. Spiller has four receiving touchdowns as well. And Spiller and Howard are both averaging over 22 yards per catch. Listen, they are deep threats. They, can, they are burners. And if they get behind your safeties, Howard and Spiller can turn, can turn one play into a quick six points. So Howard and Spiller are going to have to try to find a way to get behind this Jackson State secondary and really put some pressure on the secondary and, and this defense Jackson State to play honest and not load the box. Now, the matchup to watch, listen, it's a SWAT championship. We had to go big. We had to we, we had to go big here. And y'all know I'm an I'm an offensive lineman at heart. I picked the entire line of scrimmage battle on both sides. So Prairie View's O-line against Jackson State's elite D-line. And I also picked Jackson State's O-line that struggled all year long against the solid Prairie View front seven. So I picked both because, listen, if Prairie View is going to pull the upset, guys, they are going to have to win these line of scrimmage battles. It's much easier said than done, but if they allow Jackson State to control the line of scrimmage, they are not going to have any chance to pull this upset off. Now, 
you look at their offensive line, they've quietly been so underrated this year, man. They are second in the SWAC and sacks allowed this season, only 17. That's only two behind FanView for number one in the SWAC at 15. They've only allowed more than two sacks in only two games this season, one of which was Texas A&M, which probably doesn't count because Texas A&M has a D-line that nobody in the SWAC has right now. So only one SWAC team has exceeded two sacks against this offensive line. They've never allowed double-digit tackles for loss in any game this season, and that's really, they've really been a key of why this offense has been so balanced and so explosive. They've allowed Jawan pass his time in the pocket, and they've done a nice job in creating rushing lanes for those for those three, four backs that they can rotate in and out. So Prairie View's offensive line has to control the line of scrimmage. If they don't do that, there's no chance they're going to pull this upset off. Now, like I said last time, man, what can I say about this Jack State D-line? I mean, they lead the SWAC in sacks, 48 sacks this season. They have six games with four or more sacks this year. And there's one name you guys got to know. He's the X factor in this matchup, James Houston. 14 and a half sacks, guys. 20 and a half tackles for loss, seven forced fumbles. James Houston is an entire problem. I mean, if if Prairie View allows him to wreck their game plan, he by himself could win this game. I mean, with seven forced fumbles on 14 and a half sacks, almost 50% of them have come on off of strip sacks. So James Houston has to be accounted for. I said on the round table, making him make decisions doing the quick pass to neutralize them are the number one things to, that you have to get done if you're Prairie View. And on top of that, Antoine Owens and Niles Gaddy have been playing great down the stretch. A combined 10 sacks, over 21 tackles for loss combined for those two guys. If they can get production from their front four, Jackson State is going to be very hard to beat. If Prairie View allows them to play in the backfield, there is zero way Prairie View pulls off the upset. Now, on the other side, it's the complete opposite. Prairie View has the advantage by a mile. Jackson State's offensive line hasn't been able to block anybody. I mean, it's been by far the worst aspect of this team. They rank 11th, second to last in the SWAC, and sacks allowed with over 30 allowed this season. And Sanders continually bells out this front five. I've heard the narrative. They're not that bad at pass blocking. The stats say otherwise. The film says otherwise. The only reason that people think they are okay at it is because they have Shador Sanders at quarterback. That's it. If he if he lacked any mobility, Jackson State would have gave up easily 40 sacks this season. And this is going to be a real test for Jackson State's offensive line. They've allowed two or more sacks in nine of their 11 games. The only two they didn't were Texas Southern and Alabama A&M. Not many great defensive linemen in those matchups anyway. And they've allowed three or more sacks in five different games this season and nine or more tackles for loss in four of their last five games, including that 13 tackle for loss game against Bethune-Cookman and nine tackles for loss in their past two games. His offensive line has to communicate, and they have to be disciplined, man. They have to pick up the blitz in the interior. Listen, the key this weekend, the tackles have slowly started getting better for Jack State. The two guards in the center have not been good all season long. And if Jason Dumas can wreak havoc on the inside and that pocket starts collapsing on the inside on Shador, major, major problems are going to occur for Jack State, and they're going to be in a lot of trouble in this matchup. Now, the Prairie View defensive line, they've been stout this season. They ranked fifth in sacks in the SWAC over 24 this season, headlined by first-team SWAC pick Jason Dumas at D-tackle. The Panthers have a sack in every single game but one this season, including six of their 11 games with two or more sacks this season, including that eight-sack performance against Houston Baptist, and they have six different players with two or more sacks. You look at Dumas, seven and a half sacks, 13 tackles for loss. Troy James and Rashad Powell and also Travion Green. These guys have combined for, for almost 10 sacks, and they've also combined for just about 20 tackles for loss this season. If Prairie View can get pressure consistently to Shador, get it up the middle, filter him to the DNs, and the DNs don't allow Shador to get loose, Prairie View has a great chance in this one because if you can make Jackson State's passing game inconsistent, I don't think they can run the ball on Prairie View. So for me, that's going to give them the best chance to win this football game. They have to find a way to rattle Shador and get Shador to the ground. They cannot allow his feet to become a problem, and they can't allow him to sit in the pocket all day. So Dumas and these D-linemen are going to be key. And if you're Jackson State's O-line, 
you have one more chance in swag play to show that you're not as weak as everyone's been saying. This is going to be one of their biggest tests of the season that they've had. Now, if you would, if if we would have covered this game three weeks ago, guys, before the injuries, before the AL, before the Alcorn game, I would have said this game is one of the best games like uh, in the SWAC this season, and everything's just kind of fell apart for. Prayer review down the stretch. I think the coaching rumors have hurt them. Injuries have hurt them. Scheduling Texas A&M in the middle of November in a championship run is one of the weirdest ideas that I think anyone's ever had. So for me, when you look at Jackson State getting a week off, prayer review being banged up at every major position, losing a top contributor like a Mullins, maybe even losing a Brooks for the game. Jawan Pass's shoulder isn't great. He was like 50% last week. I just don't see a way Prairie View escapes this game with a win. I have Jackson State winning this one, though. It's a close one because Jackson State just, right, they haven't really shown me they can blow anybody out, and I still think Prairie View is going to put up a fight in the SWAC title game. So I got Jackson State this weekend, 28, Prairie View 20 this weekend in the Vetman, an eight-point win for Jackson State, 28-20. For the Tigers as they get a huge swag title win, their first since 2007, and Coach Prom makes a statement in his first year and gets a swag title win to launch into into year three here at Jackson State, man. So, guys, listen, it's our swag game of the week, man, our only game of the week. Make sure to comment your score predictions below, subscribe, and like the video to enter our $50 Vidmo giveaway if you predict the winner and the correct score. Make sure to subscribe, though, like the video, and also make sure to tune into this game. Get you another screen. You can watch You can watch all the games at once, but make sure you are driving these TV views up. It's going to be huge for the SWAC to put up a big number this weekend on ESPN2. But, guys, I hope if you're traveling to the vet, if you're traveling to Jackson, may y'all be safe, have a blast. And until next time, guys, the Blue Bloods are out.